you solemnly state that the testimony you're about to give and the cause down pending before this court should be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help God? Yes. Thank you. Please have a seat. Please state and spell your first name. Uh, Angela G. A N G E L I. Okay, first initial of your last name is G. Yes. I'm going to ask you to lean right into the microphone so everybody yes. can hear you. All right, counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, good morning. Good morning. Do you know someone by the name of Gareth Pursehouse? Yes. Do you see him in court today? Yes. Could you please identify him by telling us where he's seated and what he's wearing? Uh, over there, he's in a suit. Could you describe the color and shirt? Uh, looks blue and blue. Blue and blue what? Blue, blue shirt and blue blazer, blue shirt. Okay, identify the defendant. When did you first meet the defendant? Um, about two or three weeks before Valentine's Day, 2020. And how did you meet him? Uh, on on Tinder. And for people that don't know, what is Tinder? It's a dating app. And you met each other on the actual application. Uh, yes. Did you communicate with each other using the Tinder app itself? Um, for a brief period of time. Soon thereafter, did you <clears throat> continue your, your communication via cell phone? Yes. In order to do that, do you actually have to exchange phone numbers with a person? Yes. I'm sorry? Yes. And did you actually exchange phone numbers with the defendant? Yes. Did you store him in your cell phone number under his name and phone number? Yes, ma'am. Now, when you started to communicate outside of the Tinder application, um, did you exchange text messages? Yes. Did you exchange phone calls? Yes. How often would you say you communicated in the two weeks prior to Valentine's Day of 2020? Um, at least once a day. Um, can and you all hear? No. Okay, you're going to have to do Sorry. Speak a little um, more can, please. And that could move a little bit too if you wanted to. No, I'll scoot up. Is that better? Yes. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that I'll ask again. Okay. Um, actually, I don't remember my question. Can you read it back, Madam Reporter? <laughs> Thank you. Question How often did you say you communicated <coughs> in the two weeks prior to Valentine's Day of 2020? And your answer was, um, at least once a day. When you say once a day, would that be either by text message or phone call? Uh, sure. Now, when did you finally see each other in person after first meeting on the application? Maybe a, a couple days after meeting on the, the application? In the two weeks leading up to Valentine's Day of 2020, how often had you seen each other in person? Three, two, two to four times. Two to four times? Yeah. Now, I know this is an embarrassing question, but I have to ask, were you intimate during any of those meetings that you had with a defendant those two to four times? Yes. Now, I want to turn your attention to Valentine's Day itself, February 14th of 2020. Did you guys actually communicate on that day? Uh, yes. Was that via phone call or text message? Uh, I think it was text. At this time, Your Honor, the people are holding a series of text messages. It's one page. May that be marked as people's next in order? 68. <clears throat> Showing you what's been marked as people 68. Do you recognize these series of text messages? Yes. Do you recognize these as the text messages you exchanged with the defendant? Yes. Now, I'm turning your attention to a text message that's in green. Are those text messages that you sent or text messages that you received? I sent those. And the text messages that have a dark background, what appears to be a dark gray or black background, are those text messages that you received from the defendant? Correct. Now, I'm pointing your attention to the text message in green where it says, what are you up to and why haven't you asked me out tonight? Sad face. Is that a text message that you sent to the defendant on Valentine's Day? Yes. And did he respond to you shortly thereafter? Yes. Now, what time was that? Um, looks like about 7 p.m. 
Can you see it better there? Uh, 6.48 p.m. it says. And what was his response to you? And we're home, I told you I'm busy all week. <clears throat> now, did you expect to hang out with him that day? I did. And why did you expect to hang out with him on Valentine's Day? Uh, we had been hanging out and I enjoyed his company. Now, did you find it kind of annoying that um, his response to you about, business, about Valentine's Day was, was that he'd be busy all week? Yes. Did he actually tell you what he was doing that day? Uh, he said he was working on projects with some friends. Did you find that to be a good excuse to not go out for Valentine's Day together? Not particularly, but it is what it is. Now, did you exchange text messages the next day, February 15th, 2020? Yes. Now, I'm showing you another series of text messages. When was your first communication the next day? 10.59 a.m. And what was that communication? He texted me, morning sunshine. I said, hi. He said, what are you up to? <clears throat> now, morning sunshine, was that the first communication you and the defendant had on February 15th? Yes. So he initiated that communication with you? Correct. Now, in response to the defendants asking you, what are you up to, there is a series of text messages here. Just got back from walking dogs. Think I'm going to ride my bike to the beach in a bit. It's gorgeous out. Oh, and getting quotes for a trip. Is that your response to the defendant? Yes. What do you mean when you say, oh, and getting quotes for a trip? I was looking into how much a trip would cost. What kind of, like a trip? Um, out of, to, like a vacation. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, just stay. Okay. Well, let me ask you this, and the reasons for those questions is a segue in, into this. Did you end up seeing the defendant that day? Yes. And how did you go about meeting up with the defendant on February 15th, 2020? Um, I rode my bike um, on the beach, and I stopped by his place. And how did you uh, go about getting a bike to, to ride over to the defendant's place? Uh, I got a jump bike, which is an electronic bike that you can rent. Now, when you talk about a jump bike, is that one of those um, ride share um, <clears throat> bikes that you see on the side of the road that you yes. use your phone to, to ride? Correct. And uh, when you do that, you utilize your cell phone, is that correct? Correct. And you receive... The council, we laid a foundation for something? Yes. Okay, I'll give you some leeway. Thank you. And do you receive a receipt as a result of that ride? Yes, you do. Your Honor, at this time, the people are holding a receipt of a trip. May that be marked as People 69? Yes. Showing you what's been... Showing you what's been marked as People 69, do you recognize what's photographed here? Yes. And how do you recognize that? That's the route I took to get to his place. It's along the boardwalk. So is this receipt the reflect your trip from your house to the defendant's house? Correct. And he lives in what city? Uh, Playa del Rey, though. Now I'm going to zoom in here just a little bit. Where are my fingers pointed indicates Saturday, February 15th, by 29768, 1229 to 1 p.m. Did you arrive at the defendant's house at 1 p.m. as reflected in this receipt? Objection leading. <coughs> Go ahead. Uh, sustain. Ask your next question. Can you describe the time frame that's, uh, explain the time frame that's depicted in People 69? Um, I arrived at his house at 1.40 p.m. And what does 12.29 signify? The time I left my house. So it took you approximately 72 minutes to get from your house in, uh, where was that? Santa Monica. To Playa del Rey? Correct. Now, what did you do once you arrived at the defendant's house at around 1.40 p.m.? He greeted me, we went up to his place, and uh, he was doing some 
work on um, the French doors at the front of his place, and I helped him organize his apartment. How long would you say you were in his apartment for that evening, or that day? Uh, maybe two hours. And um, what would you say his demeanor was when you initially saw him? He greeted me, and after that he seemed sad and distant, I'd say. Now, he seemed sad and distant. And distant. Thank you. Were you intimate on this occasion when you went to the defendant's house? No, ma'am. Did you guys hug or, or kiss? I think we hugged, but that's that's it. You may have kissed, or are you unsure? maybe. Was that something that you would have customarily done in the I prior times? This thing. Sorry, now, you said you hung out in the defendant's house for about a couple of hours. Is that correct? Yes. Did you guys decide to do anything else aside from just stay at his place? No. Was there any conversation about doing anything else aside from helping him organize his, um, his house? At that point, no. At what point did you guys discuss doing anything else aside from staying home? Prior to my riding the bike um, along the boardwalk, uh, we discussed what if we wanted to hang out today and what we would do. And was this on a phone call? Correct. And what was the discussion in regards to what to do that day? Uh, I think we threw out ideas. Um, he, I don't recall exactly, but I think he suggested maybe going to the shooting range. Um, I wanted to go to the beach because it was a beautiful day out, and I wanted to be outside. Um, he said he couldn't go in the sun because his skin was sensitive. I rule that out. Because he, I'm sorry, what? Uh, he said his skin was sensitive, so he couldn't be outside. Um, and I think he suggested going to the shooting range after that. Um, and that's, I think, when I said, I'll just ride my bike up to you and teach you how to use the jump bike, because he'd never ridden one before. Now, while you were hanging out with the defendant in his apartment, did you notice any injuries to him? Yes. And what kind of injury did you notice? Uh, there was a bruise um, under his eye and maybe some scratches on his face. Did you... I, I didn't even get that either. Bruise under his eye and scratches on, scratches, on his face. Okay. Um, right. On his face. So just to, so that people can hear you, why don't we try to um, maybe keep your voice up just a tiny sure, bit. Sure, Thank you. Um, you said you noticed a bruise and some scratches. Do you know which eye? I think it was his right eye. He had is a that, bruise. I'm sorry, is that to the best of your recollection as you sit here today? Correct. Did you ask him about how he got this bruise and on his eye? I did. And what was his response? I believe he said he cut himself shaving. Did you find that response to be odd? Objection calls for a criminal response. All uh, right, sustained. Did you believe him? Objection irrelevant. Sustained. So his response to you of asking him about a bruise under his eye was that he cut himself shaving. Objection has an answer. Well, overruled uh, because there were two injuries, uh, types of injuries. Uh, um, noted one was scratches to his face, the other one was uh, uh, the eye bruise. So you can ask the question. Why don't you ask, we ask it again? Do it, Go ahead and. Oh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? So his response to you asking about how he received a bruise on his eye was that he cut himself shaving. Correct. When you say there was a bruise on his eye, um, did it appear to be a black eye? What kind of bruise? It looked like a, a small black eye, correct. Had you seen a black eye on him prior to that day? No. Now, I know you said you hung out with him at his place for a couple of hours. Um, at any point during the time you were with him, did he ever mention that he ran into an ex-girlfriend recently? No. Did he mention to you that he actually went to his ex-girlfriend's house on Valentine's Day? No. Did he appear distraught to you when he was hanging out with you? Well, she said appear as opposed to was he distraught, not alone. 
No. In any of the times that you hung out, did he ever mention running into his ex-girlfriend? No. Did he indicate any thoughts to you on February 15th when you were hanging out at his house that he was very depressed? No. Did he indicate to you that he was at all suicidal while you were hanging out with him? No. Did he ever, in the time that he spent with you, express that he was suicidal? No. Yes. Did you also have a conversation with defense prior to uh, your testimony today? Yes. And when was that? Uh, a few weeks ago. And during your conversation with defense a few weeks ago, um, were you asked certain questions in regards to your interaction with the defendant on February 15th, 2020? Yes. What sort of question was asked of you in regards to what you guys did together on February 15th, 2020? Now, in regards to um, your activities with the defendant on February 15th, 2020, you gave a statement to detectives. Is that correct? Yes. And you gave this statement to detectives around the time the defendant was arrested. Is, is that right? Yes. Were you with the defendant when he was actually arrested? Yes. Where were you guys going? He was dropping me off at my house. And during that uh, conversation with detectives, you indicated to them uh, what you did with the defendant while you guys were hanging out. Is that right? Correct. Was that same sort of question asked from you by the defense? Yes. Did the defense bring up with you that... Um, we have to the line of questioning, Your Honor. Well, I have no question. Is it going into what the defense asked? Let me hear the question. Was there any questioning that in, was initiated by the defense in regards to the defendant asking you to go to a shooting range? All right. Sustained. Move We're drawn. Nothing further. All right. And that's, that question is stricken the jury's to disregard Yes. That. <clears throat> Hello, Ms. G. Hello. Let me just get organized here for a second. Oops. stays up here um, all right so I wanted to start by asking you um, when the first time was that you met Gareth it was a few weeks prior to um, February 15th 2020 do you remember the date no okay and when you met him did you, what did you guys do we went to a comedy club and was this for a friend's birthday Correct, yeah. Do you remember who that friend was? No. Does the name Corey Saria sound familiar? Sorry, no. Okay. And that was at the, what was, what was it, which comedy club was it? Uh, the, co the comedy store or the Laugh Factory? I can't recall one which one. One of those two? Yeah. Okay. And did you both arrive late and then leave early? Um, I don't recall arriving late or leaving early. Okay, you just <laughs> arrived whenever and yeah. left whenever. Yeah. Um, and do you know approximately the date you first started interacting with Mr. with Gareth? 
Um, again, a few weeks prior to February 15th. Okay. So um, on February 15th, um, you get this, this text me message, uh, morning sunshine, and um, you decide to take your jump bike and, and ride to, to Garris' apartment. Is that right? Yes. And um, how many times had you been to that apartment? I think twice before. Okay. Twice. So this was the third time? Yeah, either the second or third time. Okay. Yeah. And when you arrived, um, did you find that the condition of his apartment kind of bothered you? Yes. And could you tell us why that it bothered you? Uh, it, it was just disorganized. Um, I think he was doing construction work on his front um, patio doors. So all of his things were kind of like piled away from that area and it was it was messy. And so you found it very disorganized and you found, you f did you suggest that you help him organize everything? Correct, yeah. I'd like to show you some pictures if this will stay up. When you were at this uh, apartment, do you remember what street it was on? No. Do you remember the neighborhood? Uh, yeah. yeah. Is it a, was he in an apartment building or was his unit oh. attached to a, a, a standalone home? It, it was attached to a standalone home. It was like the lower level, I think. So it was kind of like what someone might call a granny flat or a... Sure, yeah. Okay. have a series of photographs I'd like to mark. What's the next one in order? Yeah, is there a couple S, so photograph one through what now? Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine photographs. All right. So D, one through nine. May I use this? Yes. Is that the living room of Garris uh, residence? Yes. Thank you. 
Yes. Yes. Was this the type of condition that you saw him? Correct. Yes. And is this the condition you saw in? Yes. <coughs> that was defense four. No, no three. And um, this is defense four. Show us four. Is this the condition? Yes, yes. All right, let's, let's approach if you would. Council.
six additional photos and the one and plus 16 no no you said pick six so yeah yeah sure six. whatever you want that's fine yeah okay. does this accurately reflect the state yes well, there seems to be construction materials is that correct yes is this the state of his bathroom yes and this is uh, six <coughs> this is the living room again? Yes. And that's an accurate representation? Yes. Seven. This is SS8. Yes. This is an accurate representation. Yes. And last one, SS ten. You were in his garage when you went to get into the vehicle to be driven home? Yes. Is this an accurate representation of the garage? I, I don't recall the garage. Okay. So let me, Ms. Burstein, Lev, I'm just going to modify it. Uh, double S is 1 through 10 as opposed to 1 through 16. Okay, thank you. All right. Yeah. So it's 1 through 10. Did you remember telling the detectives who interviewed you um, after? Y the vehicle that you were in with, with Gareth was stopped. Do you recall telling the detectives that his place was disgusting? Probably, yes. Well, prior to testifying today, in addition to speaking with the prosecution, did you get to review the audio tape of your interview with detectives? Uh, I, I read the transcript. You read a transcript. And do you recall um, telling the detectives that Mr. First, out, Gareth had told you that he'd had an excruciating breakup with an ex. Objection, hearsay. Well, this witness was asked on direct about this. Objection. Yes. He, the, the question was whether or not he ever mentioned a, 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 an individual or a prior relationship with this individual. You can ask that. Well, but, but the, he had told you he had a bad breakup. Objection. Correct. Okay. Did, did he ever mention that? Yes. Okay. I'll allow that. Go ahead. So he told you he had this excruciating breakup. Well, I'll allow the prior answer to stand and let's move on. Okay. A bad breakup. Um, and had you tried to um, talk to Gareth and get to know him on a deeper level and find it was difficult for him to open up to you? Somewhat, yeah. Um, and you said that when you saw him on the 15th, when you went to his place on the 15th, he didn't seem as he normally was. He seemed sad and distant? Correct. And how, how, did you, how could you tell he was sad and distant? Uh, we didn't chat much, um, and he was kind of staring off into space, um, doing something on electrical on the door. And. Do you recall saying to me when we spoke that you felt sorry for him and you wanted to um, be there when he was sad the same way he had been there for you when you were sad? Yes. I'd like to talk to you about when you left um, Gareth's place. Um, you had ridden a bike to his home, but you didn't want to have to ride it back. Is that correct? I was going to ride it back. He offered to drive me home. Okay. I like riding bikes. Okay. It's not unusual. Okay. So he um, offered to give you a ride and you accepted it? Correct. Because you had some friends that you were meeting up with later? Correct. And so you and, and Gareth walked out the back of his uh, residence? Yes. And there's like a long flight of stairs <coughs> that lead through the yard and the, uh, lead to the detached garage? 
Yes. And his vehicle was in the detached garage? Yes. And it was a red Lexus? Yes. And so um, did he open, if you, if you recall, did he open up the garage door um, with you with him or did you go into the garage and he went out front by himself? I don't remember. Okay. So then you both did get in the car? Yes. And he drove out of the garage? Correct. And as you were driving, as you both were driving out of the garage, what happened? Uh, we were blocked in by several cars, uh, and I wasn't really sure what was happening. They, I think they were normal looking cars. Um, and then I, I think a, a police car showed up at some point, and then they started telling him to get out of the car. Did they tell both of you to get out of the car? Uh, they asked him to get out first. And how did they ask? Objection relevance. Uh, Sustained. Did you see any guns drawn? Objection relevance. Uh, I don't know the answer. I think that one witness already testified that there were. Were the guns, did you notice any guns uh, drawn? I, I don't recall, honestly. All right. All right. Um, was it scary for you? Very. I don't know the answer. Uh, could you repeat your answer? Very. <coughs> Um, did Gara say anything to try and reassure you? Yes. What did he say? He said. Objection piercing. Uh -huh. He said, just do what they say. Um, and did you see Gareth get out of the car? Yes. And how was he able to get out of the car? Uh, through the passenger uh, window or door or window, when, I can't remember, but um, and then he got face down on the ground. And was that according to the instructions that were being yelled at him? Yes. yes. And the instructions were yelled at him by officers? Yes. Yeah, it'll stand. Right. I'm sorry, it, it'll, it'll stand. stand. Okay. Go ahead. And then after. Um, Gareth got out of the car. Did you have to get out of the car too? Yes. Were you instructed to also lay down on the ground? Objection. Did you lay down on the ground? Objection. Did you see Gareth taken away in handcuffs? I, I don't remember. I, he, I saw him in the back of a car. I don't recall if it was in handcuffs. Was, this was a frightening experience for you? Yes. Well, Your Honor, she made a statement to detectives afterwards, and I think her state of mind is important. I, I think, why, why is her state of mind important? Uh, we can talk about that side, but that's not. But she's already answered previously that it was a scary experience. I'll let that stand. So you then went, the, how, how is it you came to talk to, to any detectives? Um, <clears throat> they, a police officer sat me down on the sidewalk. Uh, he wouldn't tell me what was happening. He said, wait for the detectives, for your questions. And then a couple hours later, um, two detectives came um, and talked to me. So you sat on the sidewalk for two hours? Um, I don't recall exactly how long, but it was a while, yes. <clears throat> and then where were you while you spoke to the detectives? I was in their car. Was it still on that street? Uh, where the arrest con was conducted? Uh, no, we drove, I think, to the impound to get my bag that was in, that was in the car, in Ger Gareth's car. Okay, so the officers drove you to retrieve your personal property from the car that had been impounded? Correct. So you went to the tow yard to do that and you were having a conversation on the way? Correct. Now, when you say you saw scratches on Gareth's face, where did you see the scratches? Um, I, I don't recall exactly. There were a couple on his neck and face, if I remember correctly. Do you remember what side of his face they were on? I want to say the right side of his face. Do you remember how many you saw? maybe three or four. OK. 
Can you describe the scratches? Were they scabbed? Were they welts? Were they red? Any way they to They were describe? red. They were red? Can you describe how long the scratches were? I, maybe, maybe a half inch. And you don't know how many there were? No. Would you say it was more than two? Didn't she say three or four? Three to four? That, was that your answer? Yes, three that's right. Okay. <coughs> and all on the right side, as far as you can recall? Yes. And so those three to four were all either on the face or on his neck? Yes. Do you recall what Gareth was wearing that day? I think he was wearing orange um, basketball shorts, and, and then he changed. What was he, was he wearing a t-shirt? Uh, yes. A short sleeve t-shirt? Yes. And basketball shorts? Yes. And that was while you guys were organizing the apartment? Correct. And then he changed before he drove you home? I don't recall when he changed. But yes, that, that sounds right. At some point he changed from what, what I saw him in. Okay. Did you, did Gareth tell you whether or not he'd ever fired a gun before? I, I think he said he'd never fired a gun before. And um, do you have experience with firearms? Yes. Um, and is that something you had told Gareth about? Yes. And had you ever suggested to Gareth that you guys go to a firing range? Yes. Um, but on this particular day, Gareth suggested that? I, I believe so. Was that, did that surprise you? Um, not particularly. Did he tell you why he wanted to go to the firing range? Uh, I think it was in... Did you ask him why he wanted to go to the firing range? No. Were you aware that Gareth's father had died uh, recently? Sustained. Do you recall Garrett telling you he had a shoulder injury? <clears throat> Did you ever notice there was a shoulder injury that Gareth had sustained prior to February 15th? After um, Gareth, did, did you see Gareth um, taken into custody and driven away in a police vehicle? Yes. Yeah, well, I'll let the answer stand. She said it yes previously. And um, so you still remained at that location after Gareth was taken away? Yes. Did you uh, observe his demeanor during the arrest and Objection. the and transportation away from this location? Objection, compound, and relevance. Um, I'll allow the you observe his demeanor? Uh, yes. Okay. How would you describe it? Calm. Thank you. Nothing further. Uh, any regret? Just briefly. All right. Ms. G, you were asked a series of questions about um, the defendant's place, and you s had responded that he was working on on the actual apartment, is that correct? Yes. Was he, did he tell you what he did for a living? Yes. Did he do construction? Sustain. Was he in construction? No. Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope. Well, the first question you had asked about whether he was in work at his home, that's different, and I'm gonna sustain the objection. 
the way this question is posed. Did he tell you what he did for a living? Yes. And what was that? Hearsay. So, uh, sustain. Admission by a party opponent, Your Honor. No, I'm sorry? What he told her he did for a living? Admission by a party opponent, Your Honor. Uh, I understand, but let, let's approach you. Did for a living? Yes. And what did he say he did for a living? Uh, software development and apps. And, and what? For apps. Okay. Developed apps. Now you were asked a series of questions on cross examination about this conversation you had with detectives. Um, so just to be clear, you had a conversation with police officers sitting down on a curb as well as in a, as in a car. <coughs> on the way to pick up your personal belongings. Is yeah, that right? She was the witness's testimony. She was told to wait for the detectives by the... Well, again, no speaking of objections. Is that correct if you stated it that way? If it's not correct, I'm sure this witness will correct you. So... Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry, what's sure. that? Sure. Did you have two separate conversations with, the te with um, law enforcement on that day? Yes. One was by the curb, is that correct? Correct. And one was in a car on the way to get your personal belongings? Correct. Now, your conversation with detectives was recorded. Is that correct? Yes. Now, when you were speaking with detectives, um, did you ever bring up your conversation that you had with a defendant in regards to um, going to a shooting range that day? I, I don't think so. You were asked on cross-examination whether um, the defendant ever indicated to you whether he had fired a gun before. Do you recall those questions on cross-examination? Yes. Did that ever come up in your conversation with detectives? I don't think so. When did that ever come up? Um, not at all until I spoke with the defense. Did Mr. Pursehouse indicate to you that he was dating other women during the time that you were seeing each other and that few week period prior to Valentine's Day? Objection beyond scope and irrelevant. No, overruled. Oh, 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 the, the field was done and in the cross examination. There was a breakup with the prior uh, relationships. I'll allow that. But this is regarding currently. Currently, did you say? No, at, yes. the time, at the time that they were. That's correct. And together, I guess. Yes. I'll allow it. Uh, he did not say he was seeing anybody else. Did you assume that he wasn't seeing anybody else during that time? Uh, yes. Thank you, nothing for it. Okay, uh, anything? Um, did the conversation about going to the fire range happen between you and Gary? Yes. And you recall that? Yes. You didn't make that up to tell the defense? No. Thank you, nothing for it. Anything based on that one question? Nothing? I'm sorry, and you, and uh, it just, defense brought that up with you, not yourself, is that correct? They asked me about it, and I, yes, I confirmed. Thank you. Okay. All right, you may step down. Thank you.